Well, hello, hello, Young and the Restless Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Wednesday, July the 27th, 2022. This is what happened on the Young and the Restless. To me, mediocre day. I mean, we saw a lot of Nick, not brooding, but in deep contemplation, you know, just uh, just anxious because he doesn't know what happened to Ashlyn. He he doesn't know. He's feeling guilt that he doesn't know if he should feel guilty for killing someone or or what's going on. And, and that's what's what's hard for Nicholas is the the uncertainty. Um, Nick Victor told them both that what do you mean? Because they asked him. Okay, now the chance is gone what happened tonight? And he's like, I just got here. I just heard what happened when you all were telling Chance. I didn't believe that for a second. And I honestly don't know if Vic, if Nick and Victoria believed him, but they wanted to believe him. You know, realistically, they want that out. They, they want to think Ashlyn got up and walked out of there. They don't want to think anything differently. And um, because who made the statement? I think it, maybe it was was Michael made the statement, or so, somebody made the statement that you know it's better to know you didn't kill someone. You know that they they got up and and, and it didn't end horribly. And and for Nick, that is going to be important to him. Um, but I think the truth is definitely going to come out now. Sally, Sally shows up. Adam had been sleeping on the bed in his room at the, um, the Grand Phoenix. And when he wakes up, she's sitting there on the little love seat with the key card in her hand. And he's like, how did you get into my room? And she says, you mean our room? The room we normally book? This has been our sanctuary safe haven for months now. That room? Well, the, I just asked the clerk to give me a key that you forgot to give it to me we're regulars, you know. So Sally made one last heartfelt pitch to Adam. She is just begging him pretty much. And he decides to tell her once again that she's imagining it, it's over, there is no future. And finally, she just looks at him and she goes, okay. And she picks up her purse and she walks away. And he's like, wait, okay. What do you mean by, okay, it's over. Just, you're going to accept it just like that. She said, just like that. And so she goes to the door, she opens it. She goes, well, with one exception, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna resign from new uh, from Nuba Media. I'm gonna resign. And she looks at him and she walks out the door. And he looks like, wait, you can't do that. Wait, you know. And in my mind, I'm thinking, what is Adam's end game here? I'm not understanding his plan right now because he's brooding. He he's floundering around. He's upset. But yet he wants Sally to have this job. Why so badly? And once he heard that and she walked out the door, he picks up his phone and he books a flight to Las Vegas. Now, remember, Las Vegas is where he was when he didn't know who he was. And that's where he he's Mr. Gambler in Las Vegas. I forget his his little Las Vegas pseudo name. It wasn't Sparrow. If anybody can remember Adam's gambling name while he was in Vegas, because he was a big deal. He was a shark. He was winning all kind of money there. Uh, put that in the comments. It wasn't Sparrow. But whatever his name was, if anybody remembers, put that in the, the chat. So he's going back to Las Vegas. Um, then we get Chance. He is working with, you know, another police officer because he, he's trying to get evidence, trying to figure out, you know, 
Where's the next step? You know, there has to be a blood trail with that much blood in the house. Um, so he's coordinating with his officer, Michael Baldwin, uh, comes up into the coffee house with his ponytail. <laughs> and uh, that's so funny to me because in, in all his career as Michael Baldwin on General Hospital, he's never had a ponytail, but he's got one now. Um, and he's trying to pump chance for information saying, you know what, I want to be able to report back to Victor Newman, you know, Chesco, so you can report back to Victor Newman. And Michael's like, well, I'm his attorney. So yeah, <laughs> you know, at least he wasn't trying to hide that fact. Um, but Chance goes, well, you know, if I get anything, I'll let him know. Well, Michael said, well, since I'm here, if you get anything, let me know. I'll tell him. Chance is like, yeah, okay. What, you know, okay. And he goes back out on the patio with his deputy talking to, oh, you know what? It was Michael that told Nicholas, you know, that it's not good to have, you know, the death of someone on your head, you know, and, and on your conscience. So, um, and he was telling him that, you know, you defended your sister, you know, that you, you were admirable. You defended her, you defended you, you know, they're looking for him. He will be found, you know, don't worry about it, Nicholas, go home and get some sleep because you're not looking good. Right. So Victor, before all this, they convinced Victoria to finally go back to the ranch. Okay and stay with them for their protection. Now, guess what, everybody? Had she listened in the first place, Ashlyn never would have been able to do what he did in her house. Nicholas never would have killed him because I really think he did. Um, so, you know, but she didn't listen then, but she is listening now because she's afraid now. And so she packs her bags and Victor is gonna take her to the ranch while Nick locks up the place, locks up Victoria's house. So before they go home, she talks him into going to the office because she wanted to pick up some files that she could work on at the ranch. And Nikki was burning the midnight oil at Newman Enterprises. So they they end up telling uh, Nikki the whole story. And she's like, you know, well, thank God Nicholas did come and, and Victoria you know, he will be found, you're going to be safe with us and, and the whole nine yards. And then Victor gets a phone call and he says, I got to take this. And he walks out. And then he, Michael Baldwin calls him telling him that they don't have any real news. He has nothing to report yet at this point, right? So Victor comes back in as Nikki is telling Victoria that, look, she's not about to lose any sleep over Ashlyn Locke. He's just not worth it. And she tells Victoria the same. And Victor's like, I agree, sweetheart, I agree. Well, Nicholas is locking up and he looks down and he sees that crest ring that Ashlyn had put in his pocket, the one that Victoria had given him for Valentine's Day. So he picks it up and he calls Victoria and he says, you know, I found this ring. It's got a crest on it. She goes, I gave it to him as a, a Valentine's Day gift. It's a Locke family crest. And he was, you know, took it out and was waving it around at me. And he's, he says he's, he was, you know, going to keep that as a reminder. And Nick says, did he throw it? Because I found it on the door by, I mean, on the floor by the French doors. And Victoria's like, no, he didn't throw it. He put it in his shirt pocket. So Nicholas is like, hmm, okay, well, thanks. And she goes, I don't ever want to see that thing again. And he goes, okay. So Nicholas, that's when he goes to Crimson Light. That's when he talks to Michael and he runs into Michael. And then um, he goes out onto the patio where Chance is. And he goes, can I have a word with you, Chance? And he's talking to Chance and Chance tells him, you know, they don't have any leads right now. Is there anything else he wants to tell me, you know, that you want to tell me, Nick? Anything else? And Nick says, well, I found this. And he brings out the ring by the French doors. And he tells Chance what Victoria tells him that Ashlyn had put it in his, his shirt pocket. And Chance is like, well, do you think it fell out? And Nicholas is like, I don't know. <laughs> Goodness, I was thinking, what kind of question is that? Do you think it fell out? You would have had to have been there. And he goes, maybe Ashlyn was looking at it. I mean, everything would be just um, conjecture, wouldn't it? Because Nick wasn't there. So he goes, I don't know. So Chance is like, well, thank you so much for giving this to me because, you know, every little piece of evidence can add up to something. So um, 
then they switch back to the office. No, no, no. Mike, yeah, the office. Michael Baldwin is coming in. Nikki and Victoria and Vicky were leaving, but then Victor says, look, I got to take care of something. You go ahead and take Victoria home. I will meet you all there, but I want to talk to Michael. So they said, okay, but you know, don't be too long. So he sits down and he's talking to Michael and he's uh, saying, well, what's the update? And he goes, well, as you know, as I was leaving, uh, Chance got a call. You know, they found a car at the bottom of the ravine, possibly Ashland's car. And Victor is looking, he goes, and was Ashley's bo Ashland's body inside of the car? And Michael Baldwin's like, yes. And Victor's like, mm, well, good. I mean, he didn't say good, but his, his, his whole demeanor is just the way it is here in this picture. Arms crossed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I told him not to mess with my family. And this is what happens, you know. I thought, I just figured the way Victor showed up at that house, he had that crime. It wasn't a crime scene, the accident scene, because it was an accident. It was a homicide, you know, it wasn't a murder, you know, and so um, that he had the scene contaminated and they got Ashlyn behind the wheel of a car. But see, listen, good forensics is going to show the man was dead and was in no condition to drive a car. Is going to show he was placed behind the wheel of that car. Because in order for Ashlyn to have gotten in a car and driven away and driven off a ravine because he was so weak from the loss of blood, there would have been a blood trail to the car. Let's be real. You know, and then there'd be bloody hands getting in the car. I mean, it's not going to be a neatly placed scene. So let's see how good of a detective Chance is going to be. Let's see how good a detective that's going to work. Because Michael kind of taught when he was talking to Chance, kind of said, well, you know, after all, you know, I, I work for your father-in-law. You know, your wife is Victoria Newman's sister. So, and Chance is kind of like, well, look, I'm still doing the job by the book. Okay, this is going to be done right. And I'm thinking, okay, Michael, here you go. No, Chance is going to do it by the book, as he should. The Newmans get away with everything. But Nicholas was, you know, he's concerned and I feel bad for Nick. I, I really honestly do feel, feel bad for Nicholas. He goes, because that this could end badly for him when all he was doing was trying to protect his sister. And Victor tells them both, you know, I'm always protect you both. So look, both of you are going to be fine, but we shall see. So a lot of the times Victor makes things worse. He really does with the way that he handles things. So that um, is my entire recap today. Not too, too much happened. They are moving the story along, you know, a little slowly, but they're moving it along. Um, so it's time for Comment Corner. I love Comment Corner. We have some comments today, a few. Monique has a comment. She says, that maybe Adam feels he doesn't deserve Sally because he feels he's unworthy of love. Because, you know, everybody's always telling Adam that um, every time that he's in love or he finds someone to love, he destroys them. So perhaps he doesn't want to destroy Sally. You know, that's an interesting thought, Monique. And, and I replied, Adam obviously doesn't know Sally Spectra, right? That is his perfect match. She is the female version of him. So no, she's not that easily destroyable. Matter of fact, it's usually the other way around with Sally. And then uh, Monique also says that she prays that they don't put Nick and Sharon. No, 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 Nick and Sally together. He says, because Nick likes those damsels in distress kind of ladies, which he does. If you look back at his history, um, he feels that he, he, he has to be with a woman that he needs to save. He's the savior in everything. And he, him and an independent woman, they don't last long, which is so true, which is why he and Phyllis are always on the outs. Phyllis is not anyone he needs to save. And she's not a damsel in distress. 
So that's why they never can last very, very long. So you are right about that. Um, but I just hope, I don't want to see Nick and Sally together at all, but guess what the last scene was? It was Sally walking back into Crimson Lights. These people never go home, right? Walked right back into Crimson Lights. She sees Nicholas. Now they are not close by any means, but she is like, you know, pretty much, you look like you could use a coffee or, you know, pretty much or a drink because you look like hell. She's like, um, would you like some company or something? She says to him and he's like, he feels like it. But in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, now she's you're going to confide in your employee that you don't know. Let's see how much he tells her. And see, so it begins. Them putting people in the same orbit as each other. It's a motorcycle going by outside, as you could tell. Them putting uh, people in the same orbit with each other, you know they're planning on making them an item. Oh my goodness. So I believe that's getting ready to happen. I don't want to see it because they're doomed from the start. But that is my daily recap for Wednesday, July the 27th on The Young and the Restless, Wednesday, July 27th. And I will be back for Thursday's recap tomorrow.